I'd still do the examination myself. Battler ye suddenly yelled. His tears were sp uh, still dripping down, but as though scolding himself for being a sissy, he slapped his face hard several times with both hands. Even so, the tears still wouldn't stop. However, he felt a hot place in both his eyes. <laughs> Rather than genuine anger, maybe it was more of an evasive anger to blot out his sadness. However, it gave a little courage to George and Jessica who had been crushed by sadness. Exactly. We can either sit here and cry all day, or we can try to solve this fucking shit and bring whoever did it to justice. Though personally, I'd fucking kill him. On this own, I'd fucking kill him. <laughs> I wouldn't care. Hunt down whoever did it and slaughter the shit out of him. ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっと。ちょっ
Oh, fucking Maria, this is not the time for this shit. Rose immediately hits her, because Jesus Christ, now's not the time. <laughs> ベアトリーチェはマジョなんだよ。そして黄金鏡の扉を開くための儀式がいよいよ始まったの。この6年はその生贄なんだよ。ビッチシャットアウトザジャイアント。ああ、ラフィングイン。ああ、ベルトマイ
別情報ただし隠された契約の黄金を暴いた者が現れた時ベアトリーチェはこの権利を全て永遠に放棄しなければならない黄金の隠し場所についてはすでに金蔵様が私の肖像画の下に気分にて工事されておりますつまりこういうことでもしこの殺人が利子の回収行為だというならそれを止める条件としておじい様に与えた隠し黄金を探し出してみるとそしてその秘密は例の肖像画の秘文に隠されているとも言ってるつまりこいつは魔女さんに挑戦状ってわけだよ黄金の隠し場所を記した暗号文を解けるものなら解いてみろってそしてそれができなきゃ利子の回収をこの後も着々と進めていきますとそう言ってぶっ殺してやる上等だパトラクこれこれ What? The table was covered with sweets, so even though those things were right out in the open, we just assumed they were sweets too. I mean, come on, you see them a lot, right? Oh my god. You know, those boxes of chocolate shaped like gold ingots. That's getting tucked into my fucking shirt or pants. <laughs> Don't worry, guys, I'm gonna keep it safe. I wouldn't have, if I was George, I wouldn't have told anyone. Fuck you, you dumbass. Come on, you hide that shit. Gold ingots weighing a full 10 kilograms, a whole three of them, were piled up in the center of the table. Fuck, I'm taking all three of them. It was where a cake would be placed if it was a birthday party. In other words, this was without a doubt the birthday cake of the party known as the family conference. <laughs> Looks like I'm 60 million yen richer today. Lucky me! I didn't lose my parents, so that's free for me. <laughs> Shot of Maria. Just fucked on all levels. Yeah, that's gonna work. Darega Hanika, Mada Wakari Masenzo. So any Beatrice Sama, Oyakata Sama, no Taisets, not Hinkakus. Go to shut the fuck up. Dakara Nanda Tita. Honey, no Munagra, Hineria, get the Deva Hakshaw, Suni, Kimatris. Jessica never stopped moving. Goda and Kenan chased after her, doing their best to convince her to stop, but Jessica never lent them an ear. Eventually, the witch's VIP room came into view. The VIP room was always sealed and never used. No matter what kind of guest Kenzo can get. Bleh. No matter what kind of guest came, Kento wouldn't let them in there. I'd be fucking kicking that door down. Beatrice! Knock knock! 
And yet the servants were always made to clean this room, so it, would, it could be used at any time. So the servants had started calling this room the witch's VIP room after their second shapeless master. Jessica knew about this too, and she couldn't forgive the arrogance of the one who called herself a witch by staying in that room. The Golden Witch was just a fairy tale. Come on, a witch? To Jessica, she was nothing more or less than a murderer who had brutally killed her parents. Question her, hear her pitiful excuses, make her sputter in pain, gasp in anguish. Oh, this is my type of fucking... Oh, hello. No matter how hard she pretends to be a witch, I'll teach her that she's just a stinking, sweaty human. Ooh, I am all game for this. Holy crap. As Jessica yelled with all her strength, she hit the door to the VIP room. Oh, that door's coming the fuck down. I'm kicking that shit in. It definitely wasn't a knock. That was the sound of a beating of her anger's hammer, as if she was determined to break down the door if it, if it wasn't open. Knock, knock, bitch! I approve of this action that uh, Jessica is taking. Oh my god, yes. This is the best. There was no answer. Jessica grabbed the doorknob without any reservation, but she felt the resistance of the lock. She turned around to look at the two servants and spoke. Give me the goddamn key or I'll kill one of you. Open it. Open it. Open it. It's rude to kill people. Open it. Although Goto was flustered, he still tried to rem somehow calm Jessica's anger. I still would say, it's rude to kill people. Open the goddamn door. After hanging his head silently for a while, Kanan pulled a master key from his jacket pocket. Thank you. Dude, you're gonna get fucking the shit beat out of you. She's not in there. She's one of the people, one of the servants pretending to be Beatrice. And I will be 100% guaranteed of that. Jessica snatched the master key from Kenneth's hand and violently shoved it into the keyhole. Immediately, there's a small sound and she felt the lock click. Then, without asking permission, she flung the door open and kicked that fucker open. Ah, guess who's not here? What a fucking surprise! Ha! Ah, ah! Who's pretending to be Beatrice? One of you servants! One of you gonna die! Which one wants to be burned first? Jessica rudely stepped into the room. I'd be fucking... I'd tear that room apart. The witch wasn't anywhere to be seen. Jessica, thinking she might be hiding somewhere inside the room, poked, peeked behind the curtains and under the bed, but she couldn't find anyone. However, there definitely were signs that the bed had been used. And though it was only a vague sense, the atmosphere in the room felt a little soft. It wasn't the hard atmosphere of a place normally devoid of people like the chapel. You could definitely tell that someone had spent the night in this room, but she could not be seen. In reality, neither Jessica nor Goda had met Beatrice. They had only been told that by those who had met her that she looked like a double of the character in that portrait. So they were doubtful that, about what her face really looked like. However, Kenneth alone had met her. He understood what kind of being that witch was and what kind of personality she had. So he knew that forcing their way in here in search for her definitely wouldn't work out. She must be watching us bitterly flail about in vain from somewhere sneering at us. That she's that kind of person. Because he was looking at things that way. Kenneth was the first to find it. The other two were concentrating on finding the shadow of a person, so they didn't notice. Near a water jug on the side table, there's a single sheet of letter paper. On it was a short message, and nearby was a fountain pen, which had probably been used to write it. Kenan had already come to understand the witch, and after finding the corpses, they had been overcome by rage and barged in here only to find no one. So of course the witch would mock them. You can't mock someone unless they know they're being mocked. So in other words, that's what this must be. <laughs> Jessica dashed over and violently snatched the piece of paper away. She probably wasn't trying to be violent, she just couldn't control her strength right now. 
As soon as she read the message, Jessica went into a wild rage, crumpled the paper up, and threw it. Then she grabbed a, a light stand by the bedside and violently swung it around, mercilessly hitting the walls and furniture with it. The light, light bulb scale all shattered at once, and the fragments were scattered across the room. Yeah, I'd probably be like once she starts swinging stuff around. That's when you just grab her arm and just hold her, hold her down, basically, and making sure she doesn't like hurt someone or you. And just so yeah, we understand, but you gotta calm down a bit. And I'll be telling her, I want to fucking kill the witch probably more than you do. But right now it's not the time to be wasting all your strength on the wall. This is written on the paper. Oh, fucking course. I would have fucking killed that bitch last night. Fuck off. Oh my god. Oh, I want to fucking burn her now. The thing is, though, that letter's written in the sense that any one of the kids could have read that and, may, and it makes sense. So it's not that she knew Jessica was going to, she knew that someone would, a child, would go in there. Which it wouldn't have been set up if Rosa was the first reader. She would have been like, what the fuck is this shit? That, okay, so it, that was a pre-prepared letter, clearly. She knew, so, the person knew that so a kid was going to come barging in here after that. Still no magic. It was the sort of thing that a wit, that witch would write. It meant she predicted that one of the children who'd lost their parents would come running in here. I just fucking predicted it right there. If she's hiding somewhere in this room, she must be rolling around laughing. Of course she's not in there, because she knows she'd be killed. The witch was that kind of person. She sneered at people's misfortune, using it to stave off the boredom of a thousand years. <laughs> Go to snatch away the light stand Jessica had been holding. After all, she if she kept swinging it around, she might end up smashing it against something, which could cause serious injury. To Goda's eyes, Jessica probably looked mad with rage, burning herself up with the flames of anger. But Cannon's eyes saw it differently. Oh, she's sad. There were probably tears of sadness hidden by rage, so... When the light stain was taken from Jessica, when she started crying on the floor, scratching at the carpet almost as though she was groveling, Goda was surprised, but Cannon was not. He's a fucking moron! Of course she's sad! Of course. She lost her means of crying by lashing out in rage. Considering that she was a daughter of the Ushirimiya had family, she was in a very shabby state. She scratched at the carpet with her fingernails, and even her feet were scratching. Jessica cried very, very hard. Because if she didn't, her rage would start building up again and swallow her up. But over and over again, she remembered that humiliating message. I can only imagine what the parents who raised you to be such a moron must have looked like. Oh god, I feel so bad for her. Feel so bad for her. Alright, oh, I saw them and they look just as moronic as you. Now their bellies were bullet in the land of sweet. Oh you can't go for a quick death like that. She deserves fucking pay.
As Jessica cried and screamed, she triggered an asthma attack. The servants watching over her hurriedly ran up to her, rubbing her back, but that only provoked Jessica's wrath. I, I wouldn't care. Fuck it. She needs to be comforted. Just look at her. She's so pitiful right now, it's sad. Ugh. Breaking my heart. Jessica got up unsteadily, and as her asthma continued, she went into the hallway. Kenneth had noticed. Goda, who was vastly separated from her in age, probably couldn't sense the tears in Jessica's heart. Kenneth, who had noticed, had to be one out to support her. Fuck off, furniture. I swear to God if he kills her. I swear to God. I swear to God if he kills her. I'll never forgive him. Fuck it. I'll never forgive him. If, the, if he kills her right now, I'll be so pissed. I'll be so pissed. Fucking the second twilight right there kills her. I'll be pissed. Because then he would have planned all of that out. That would have been no, unforgivable. Goda also understood, and he knew that Jessica and Kenna had shared a vague relationship with each other. So he understood everything and left it to Kenna. Kenna's voice was frail, but he nodded firmly. After looking at his eyes, Goda nodded firmly as well. Goto was a veteran with many years behind him. He'd seen a great number of people in his life, so he knew the vigorous spark that could be found in the eyes of those who possessed self-control. He had surely seen that in Cannon's eyes, so he wouldn't leave this to Cannon. When you think about it, maybe that was the first time Goto had ever trusted Cannon and relied on him for a job. Jessica, still suffering from her asthma, seemed to be heading towards her room, though she kept leaning against the wall. Cannon follow her, followed her wordlessly. If she had asked for a hand, he would have laughed forward and supported her, but until Jessica did ask for that, he chose to hide himself, watching over her for her from a distance where the, he could come to her rescue at any time. When people feel their hearts are about to explode from sadness and want to have someone by their side, you can bet 10 billion of them that would want to turn around and find someone in the place Cannon now stood, as he watched uh, over Jessica from behind. <laughs> 